Um, I'm Trisha Murray from the Birth and Baby Academy and tonight we are talking all about why home birth. So why would women choose to have a home birth? Are they completely mad, crazy, brave for even contemplating having a home birth? Have um, or maybe they're completely mad, crazy or brave for thinking about going into hospital. So tonight um, I'll be chatting with my friend and fellow doula, Lindsay Watt, who is um, planning her home birth. And what we'll be talking about is how she is planning that preparation, what she's doing to prepare. Um, I'm going to try and add Lindsay now to the um, chat, so bear with me, it's the first time I've done it. So um, let me just see. Whilst the system is adding uh, her to this, um, what I just wanted to introduce her and Lindsay is a mama of one and she's got one baby on the way who's coming in a couple of weeks. She is a perinatal yoga teacher specialising in pregnancy yoga and postnatal yoga. She also is a massage instructor, She, a baby massage instructor. She is a a doula, a birth worker and lover of women. She also owns a health and wellness company um, which is encouraging people to say yes to their investing in their health and wellness. So I'm thinking she should be coming on, it's saying that it's adding, so I'm hoping that Lindsay will be on soon. Um, I'm not sure why is she coming on. Are you there, Lindsay? Oh, let's try again. So I'm just waiting to see whether she um, is coming on. So, so it should be adding her. So, so it's the first time I've done this. So I've done it on Lindsay's page, but this is the first time I've done it on my own Birth and Baby Academy page. So I'm hoping that she will, it will be quite smooth. Um, and that she'll be on. But I think just, just while we're waiting for her, um, I'm not sure why it's not it's not happening. Hi Alison, how are you? So we're just waiting for Lindsay to be added on to the um added on to the uh, to the chat. And just just to be really, really, really clear that if anyone's got any questions or any comments, that, that feel free to comment all the way through. Um so, and the reason that we're doing this is really to sort of promote women thinking about having home births. So apparently last year in the UK, oh, she's still not been added on. So there's no answer from the, can you hear me, Lindsay? I'm not sure why she's not been added. I'm not sure, it says it says here, like adding, adding, so she should be coming on. But yes, yeah, so one of the things is I'm really, really keen to increase the number of women who are having home births. Um, so last year in the UK, only 2% of women had um, home births. But apparently 10% of women wanted to have home births, but didn't know that they could or find out how they, how they could possibly do that. And I know certainly in Scotland, which is where I live, is a really promoting more women, especially low-risk women, having home births. And the stats are really, really, really clear that home birth is a safe, a very, very safe option and that birth generally is very, very safe. And that's something that we seem to have forgotten. So I'm not sure where Lindsay is. I know that she certainly was... I know that she certainly... His connection failed. I'm not sure where she is. Lindsay, can you com comment? Because I can't even see if there's any comments. So oh, I'm just going to go to my laptop and see if she's messaged. So, because I'm not sure why she's... Sorry, please bear with me. I'm really sorry. Oh, there she is. Can you Hello. Sorry. I can't... Are you okay? 
Yeah, no, I was on my laptop and trying to get it working. Sorry, there's a massive delay. Sorry, there we go. I'll just pop, and then I popped you on my phone. Right. And I, I was typing right. away, being like, I'm here. Oh, I can't see any comments coming up at all, so I'm not sure why there's no comments. So I'll get my laptop up and working, see if I can keep an eye on comments there. Um, oh, and anyway, I did like a well, I introduced you, so welcome. Thank you so much for taking um, time out of your day to be to be on here. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and I think it's so oh, exciting to be doing this and to be really promoting um, home births and talking much more about, or, or normalizing home births. Because I think for such a long time, they haven't been normalized. And I think we really need to start normalizing home births and having that dialogue that home births are safe, that birth is safe, that actually it's, it's a really a valuable choice for women to actually consider having a home birth. So um, just in this week, I've spoken to so many different women about having a home birth and things that I've heard is things like, oh, my husband wouldn't like that. Um, it would not be really messy. Is it not really dangerous to give birth at home? So I've got Alexa trying in the background. <laughs> Alexa's just come on. Um, so anyway, and I think it's um, I think it's so important that actually um, that we start to normalise birth and actually see it as a as an actual option. So, um, so I just wondered what made you consider having a home birth. Okay, um, well for me actually, it for my first pregnancy with Lucas, I can't ever remember it being an a choice given to me like I can't ever remember some, anyone saying would you like to have a home birth mm -hmm. um so I then had a really wonderful birth experience with Lucas I arrived at hospital at 10 centimeters and um oh my goodness you know, Lucas was born, like probably about an hour about one and a half hours later so for me that actually that getting to the hospital being in triage settling into a room lots of questions and disturbance which is probably why i went from being 10 centimeters but an hour and a half before mm -hmm. lucas was actually born yeah um and i can just remember thinking oh my goodness that was such a fuff <laughs> so um and I found all that quite stressful. I remember being asked for a urine sample whenever I arrived in triage. I was like, that ain't happening. <laughs> um, so then I had such a wonderful birth experience with Lucas. And um, I just, I think like loads of women, do, after they give birth for the first time, it can start to consume you. And you start to become really passionate about it. And really, um, like you think about it all, all the time. And I just knew I wanted to do something with birth. So I started to really um, look um, into different birthing options. I became a bit of a birth video junkie, if I'm being honest. <laughs> so um, I just fell in love with the idea of home birth after watching so many birth videos. I loved the idea of the mm -hmm. atmosphere about creating your own environment, about how it looked so comfortable and so calm and so supported, so just looked beautiful. So um, from there on in, I really just started to research it myself. And I knew then from quite, probably about two weeks after I had Lucas, I was thinking, oh, with my next one, I'm going to have it at home. <laughs> so that's really... Yeah. Um, how I like started looking into it and then um, I met a few mums um, in my classes who were having home births um, the positive birth movement and meetups and it just throughout my own research I started to realize like the incredible statistics supporting home birth yeah that were yeah. that were all around um, yeah. and just talking to birth mummies you know, everyone just no one has had even people who transferred to had to transfer to hospital, yeah. no one has had a bad word to say about it. Yeah, totally. Totally agree. And I think that's because those women are so informed. And that's actually it was something one of your friends said earlier, Oriel, um, she said that. And I think it's if you feel really informed, that's really why you've chosen to have a home birth. 
But then that kind of place of confidence goes with you all the way into hospital as well. So I think it makes it makes a huge difference. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. And what path you're birthed you still yeah. have a very yeah. positive experience and you feel in control of the choices mm -hmm. that you've made mm -hmm. that's right totally and yeah. it's not about being in control of the birth because it's time that you you have to no. lose control but i think it's feeling in control of all the decisions and i think that that's really yeah. important so it's a really important um it's a really important um way to sort of feel i think about birth is that you and i think it's when you can reflect really well it's when you feel that you've made all your own choices um and you feel very positive about them so um i think that's that's yeah. very very true and what did um what did Jamie think when you spoke to him about it? What was his reaction? So I think that before we fell pregnant and um, whenever he knew that, um, like, you know, whenever I've been doing my yoga bellies um, or my yoga and my doula stuff and I've been talking about home birth and watching home videos, I think he was just rolling his eyes. And he kept being <laughs> like, that's not, that, that's not happening. That's not happening. I was like, okay, babe, okay, that's fine. And then um, when we found out we were pregnant and like one of the first things he said was, oh my goodness, you're going to want to have a home birth. <laughs> um, yeah, like it's not really a topic of discussion, if I'm being honest, babe. Um, mm. And he was like, oh, so he just like, he just like, went to see it white. <laughs> but mm. what I have learnt from Jamie is that he's not alone really as a man having a mm -hmm. initial reaction like that you know I think that he they're, phys they're physically wired to be the protector you know to be the risk adverse <laughs> well I know Jamie mm -hmm. is anyway so risk adverse so um you know, everything about it just did not sit comfortably with Jamie. And I had to totally respect that that's where he came from. And rather than just rolling my eyes and saying, well, it's happening, get over it. I had to, you know, really, you know, come come to his level um, and really empathize with him being like, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. Let, 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 let's, let's research this together. So I did try and really make it a, a thing that we could do together. Oh, you've cut out, Lindsay. Sorry, I can't hear you. Are you still there? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, got him to talk to other home birthing dads. Mm -hmm. So that was a really important one got him to talk to other dads who had good birth experiences um and you know slowly but surely now and i'm really glad that i started oh can you hear me yeah i can you keep cutting out a little bit but you keep coming back so yeah okay so, so slowly but surely, and um, he has definitely come come round mm -hmm. to to the to the idea. But it has taken um, probably more work than um, other maybe partners. But I think that just is very personality dependent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think for me, because I'm planning to have a home birth in August with Alster. I think I've been so evangelical about home births for the last two or three years that he knew that there was no way I would be going or planning as my first choice to be going into hospital so there was just no just he just knew <laughs> so he's like you yeah. don't even really want me there do you, <laughs> do you? I know 
<laughs> God bless them. So, I know. and and what was the and what was the reaction of like your obviously because you're back home living with your mum and dad, and you've got all your sort of friends and family, and who probably aren't birth workers and in in submerged in that field. So, what's their reaction been? Um, I think their reaction was classic Lindsay, <laughs> wanting to do something different. You know, you know, we, you know, classic Lindsay, just, I've just, you know, whatever, kind of really not taking it seriously. And then whenever it's really, you know, it's about to happen, people being like, "Whoa, you're so brave!" It's really <laughs> birth. Like, like, are you doing it by your thick? Like, you know, is there doctors there? Like, you know, like, wh what if something happens? Like, what if you need to go to the hospital? Just all the, like, bam, 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 just risk, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. I just would never do that. Just so unsafe, you know. So, like, I understand why people think that because of the culture we live in, because of how people, because of how birth is viewed in the media, but how people talk about birth, <laughs> you know, and the horror stories that go around. So I, I do understand why people um, say that initially. But what I found the best response to people is just to say, um, to kind of, you know, okay, yeah, I understand how you feel. Um, I felt like that too once. But actually, now, mm -hmm. I, I feel that people who choose to birth their babies in hospital are the brave ones. Totally. <laughs> and then they, then that totally was the good. conversation. They go, really? Why? Mm -hmm. And then you can, you can then, you know, maybe give them a few statistics or just give them your point of view about what a woman needs when she birthed, what a basic needs of a woman in labor to feel comfortable mm -hmm. and safe and loved and supported and un- unwatched unobserved um and people and then i'm like so to be honest like where would that where would you get check all those boxes than at home mm -hmm. in my own home and especially yeah. in my own family home that i've moved back to yeah. and i'm gonna have dad here my mom's probably gonna be around with lucas and it's just like the safest place in my whole world like to mm -hmm. be here in my home so I just can't imagine I just I'm so, I just have visualized it all I just can't imagine being anywhere else it's so exciting. yeah yeah and, and I think you're right about being brave to go into hospital and especially when you look at um sort of breath trauma rates now they're so high and they're all related to being in hospital you know um, you know breath trauma rates are somewhere we don't know the exact figure but there's somewhere between a third to half of women are traumatized by their births and that's in that's in hospital hospital you know and it doesn't need to be like that you know we can have completely different birth experiences and I think that really is up to the women to really start to become much more informed about birth and informed about their choices and informed about making their own decisions um, but that needs to come from a place where fear is removed about birth and speaking yeah. about fear did, yeah. was there any fears that you had or any fears that you've had in this pregnancy and if you have had any how have you worked through your fears well initially whenever I was looking up um you know just to placate Jamie or to find out more information for him I did want to get some like kind of hardcore statistics and I'm not a statistics person like whatsoever was the safest option I wanted to get some statistics to support that so the home birth the home place no the birthplace study yes, sorry yeah. that was conducted and um, really just speaks volumes doesn't it it yeah. was a massive massive study done across the whole of the uk um and that that sh showed that women with their second babies and more are less uh you know birth is the safest place for them to have yeah. their babies yeah totally which is 
less likely to have any unnecessary medical intervention, episiotomy, um, transfer to hospital is like less than 10% for yeah. a second time subsequent yeah. mummies. Um, so it was just like, it's a no-brainer really. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> yeah. So co- coming from that, I think that my fear, my fears have not been anything to do with the birth itself. It's nothing to do with my ability as a woman to birth my baby. My fears have actually been that I, I fear that the system a mm-hmm. little bit. Yeah. Um, and being back in Northern Ireland for only six months and not really having a lot of experience of of this system, um, of the midwives, like that, that they have been my fears. Mm-hmm. So I have joined a Facebook group um, in Northern Ireland um, about home birth. And I have made sure I've talked to lots of mummies in the area who have had home births and asked them, did they face any challenges? Um, I have wrote a very in-depth birth plan and mm-hmm. make sure that every antenatal appointment I've gone to, the midwives... Uh, are really like you know I've asked them have you read my birth plan you know mm-hmm. I have very specific kind of um, desires for this birth and um, just making sure everyone's on the same page really like that's how I've tried to kind of work through um, my, my, my my fear of the system mm-hmm. yeah and I think and also I... this little book has been brilliant, oh, brilliant. yeah yeah and that's what one of my favourite books. Yeah, if I think all the Eames books are particularly good, um, mm. but the Am I Allowed should be um, on everybody's antenatal bag. You know, when we get our bounty bags, we should actually be having a copy of Am I Allowed, um, you know, added in. Because actually, I think that that is worth so much more than a lot of the stuff that we get telling us that our baby is the size of an orange this week. I'd much prefer to know what my rights are in birth. Um, and there's another really good book by Rebecca Schiller um, called I think, Birth Rights in Childbirth, or I can't, I can't remember what it's called, Human Rights in Childbirth. And it's such a good book. And it's along the same sort of line lines. Um, she runs Birth Rights, which is a brilliant organisation um, that we should all know about as well in terms of birth and home birth. And birth choice and place like choice of place of birth etc etc it's a really positive yeah. really sort of positive book and in terms of when you're planning your home birth what sort of things did you take into consideration so what things did you think about to ensure that you were doing the right thing or in terms of practical like practically or emotionally what sort of things mm-hmm. have, you, have you done mm-hmm. or what are considered So I think that to make, um, to obviously take into consideration how it made me feel, um, I, if I lived probably more than 45 minutes from the hospital, I would have, considering that there are lots of midwifery-led units in Northern Ireland, I would have probably went to a midwifery-led unit. But I, I literally yeah. live, where I live, I live within a 20-minute radius of three different hospitals. Yeah. So for me, you know, that brought that, you know, risk down a lot. Yeah. And so like, and it's actually, if it was during the night, 10 minutes away yeah. from the near. Yeah. Um, well. So, you know, some, some, sometimes it takes, if you're in hospital, 10 minutes to get to a... Sorry, and we're back again. Yeah, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, that was that was a, a, a big a, a sort of consideration. And um, there's lots of space in my house. Um, I have my family around me, which I'm yeah. really lucky about. Um, and there, and for me, that big like, there was the, the two big considerations: do are we close to hospital, and do we have enough support? 
Yeah. But we have some of them that are Luca. And yeah. th th those two were, were yes. Yeah. Um, and actually, I really hope that Lucas is going to be uh, involved. Yeah. Um, uh, well, if it's appropriate, if it's, I'm not going to wake him up if it goes on yeah. in the middle of the night. Yeah. But I love him to be involved. Okay. And we've talked so much about it. Mm -hmm. And I bought that, like, Hello Baby book, mm -hmm. um, which is all about, you know, home birth. Um, Lucas would be very, like, I would talk about the female autonomy quite a lot. So he would be quite clued in on like, you know, a baby comes from, lives in mummy's womb and then is birthed through the vagina. Mm -hmm. And we talk about like the sounds that mummy's gonna make. And even whenever we've been in the bath together, I've like got on my all fours and got him to like put me flannel on my back. And I would, I would be saying things, you know, whenever mummy's having a baby, you could help me by doing things like this. Mm -hmm. So he like, it, felt very involved throughout the whole pregnancy and knows that we're having a baby at home and we're going to have a big pool. And I've brought him to a few of my midwives appointments as well. Mm -hmm. So he's got to know a couple of the midwives and things like that. So it's all been really lovely, really, mm -hmm. really lovely. And I think it's so important that we normalise birth for everybody, you know, for our sons as well as our daughters, because I think it's important that they're in a position in the future that they can support their partners. And so they can understand birth. So they don't fear birth either, because for such a long time, boys and men have been sort of locked out of the birth room. And I think that that's part of the fear culture. It's like, because something is, something is really sort of, um, it's really nasty and horrible, so we can't be in there to watch it. When actually it's the opposite. Watching birth is like, totally the most amazing thing in the world so for them to watch it from such a young age it's just given them that complete confidence that women can do that and how beautiful and amazing human nature you know you know what is mother nature is that we that we've got this gift to be able to do it it's just such a beautiful thing to watch so what a gift to give you to give our children is that ability to be part of that so I agree completely so and like that I think that comes from you know from birth to like especially because I have a, a son and a little and you you have three boys oh, so you know you are, yeah like for me like I never want to you know I talk about whenever I'm you know whenever it's my 10th month, whenever it's my moon time, Lucas knows that I bleed and he, like, it's like, you know, he's, whenever you have a toddler, they come into the bathroom with you, right? So he's like, you know, mommy, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, they're like, because, like, mommy's a superhero. And, you know, I, you know, women, mommy bleed every month because they have powers that like, make, allow them to have babies. And so he knows like all about that. So, and because I want him to grow up and not be one of those boys who are like, oh, period. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, I just want him to be yeah. like, and birth yeah, is the same, so. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you almost sort of think about oh, like, my wife's amazing, or you know, because look yeah. at her, look at what she's doing. It's amazing, like, what totally. she can do. So, because every night I go to bed and I say to Alistair, God, my body's amazing. Like, that I'm making this baby and look at it changing and what is happening. And it's like, it's like, I can just never get over what we can do as women. I think it's just one of the most amazing things to yeah. to witness and be part of, you know. Um, I think it's beautiful. I know, so, like, every time you feel your baby move, it's like, wow. Yeah. And that's why it's just so important to, like, for me, like, as part of my preparation as well, like, you know, has been to just really take every day and just be so grateful, like, because I know that, you know, this doesn't happen for all women, and I am just so grateful that I have been yeah. honoured with this gift to be able to carry and create life. So, like, being, my yeah. gratitudes yeah. have been a really big part of this pregnancy. As yeah. well as, you know. Yeah. And, and I, I agree, yeah. Yeah, and what other preparation have you been doing? So in addition to, in addition to everyday sort of gratitude, what other ways have you been preparing for? You know, especially being a birth worker. So how do the professionals, you know, prepare prepare for birth? You know, what what are you doing? What are you focusing on? Well, for me, it's about keeping my body moving, keeping the energy flowing throughout my whole body. 
Um, and that, I think, that comes from my um, from my yoga, from my yoga, um, my love of yoga, my love of movement and flow of energy. Um, so that has been that has been vital. Like I've been sitting on a birth ball like from like twenty five weeks, just rolling mm-hmm. the hips. Like I'm sitting on I'm sitting on it just now. Just keeping the body moving, keeping the blood flowing, and um, no stagnant energy. I'm trying to do yoga, like you know, I'm not gonna say every day because that's a lie. Five five times a week, you know, even mm-hmm. if it is just rolling up my mat and doing cat curls, even if it's just mm-hmm. doing one sun salutation or just rolling the body and moving in circles, just keeping the body moving is just being so important. Um. And, you know, because that just keeps you in a really conscious state and really tuned into your body, yeah. how your body's yeah. changing, where your baby's sitting, how you can move with your breath and your body to work together. It's just, it's just been a vital part um, for me, um, as well as keeping, um, just keeping really healthy, just feeding my mm-hmm. body with the best nutrition and drinking plenty of water and being really kind to myself like being mm-hmm. pregnant is just like the most the best excuse to be to treat yourself yeah 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 and just and I think just as you sort of say just being kind not having huge expectations about yourself and what you can achieve and do and you know I was um, chatting to uh, Tess yesterday and I was saying like I think like 20 minute naps every single day are essential when you're pregnant just it doesn't need to be like a half day nap but just like 20 minutes of like shutting your eyes or meditating or whatever it is but you really need to give yourself that time just to really unwind and you know really sort of breathe and really sort of tune into into yourself it's really important just 20 minutes every day is is hugely huge of that and and when you're a new mum as well it's not just when you're pregnant but when you're a new mum, to get into that discipline of actually really looking after yourself um, as much as you possibly can, I think, is really, really, really important. So um, just one final thing, Lindsay, before you go. Um, I'm just really interested. You touched on it earlier about Northern Ireland and the differences between Northern Ireland and Edinburgh. So how have you found, what, what have been the differences and how have you found, how have you found the maternity system in Northern Ireland compared to that in Scotland and um, and how do you sort of see it develop, developing? Um... Well, but positive, positives and negatives, definitely. Positives because there are so many midwifery led units within Northern Ireland. I think it's, a, it's amazing for considering how small the population is. Right. So we're definitely progressing in the right direction for sure. The, the services that are available, class, like independent services in terms of um, like NCT classes or um, positive birth meetings or doulas, mm-hmm. it, you know, that, that is where it lasts massively. So that antenatal education mm-hmm. is, I feel, is, is lacking. It, there's a massive gap in the market to inform women of all their choices so yeah. i found that yeah. in my classes so that i've been teaching now since october that just things that i maybe took completely for granted in edinburgh that people would have known things like you know so what's everyone going to bring to the hospital to create their perfect birth and env- birth environment like mm-hmm. are you thinking about bringing some remote therapy or your little tea lights your own duvet and people are, the mummies have been like, oh, can you do that? Can you play music? Can you ask to have the lights turned down? It's like, yes, 100%. You know, just like th- things like that. Like people are not, I feel that women and new mums are just not aware of what their choices are at all over here. But it's because there's mm-hmm. the only basically the NHS classes that you or, that you can go to. Well, I, I mm-hmm. feel that anyway. And like like there there is like NCT classes over here, but they're like you have to really travel. They're not, you know, for if I wanted to go to then because I, I looked up to go to them, like it was, you know, a 45 minute car journey. 
Um, but the good, the good thing is these new um, midwifery led units are um, beginning to offer these amazing um, what like uh, couples classes, like NHS classes, if you choose to birth in the midwifery led unit. So it is right, for. Okay. It's not. They're not. They're not for everyone. It's for if you're choosing the birth. Low risk. Uh, low, low risk women. So basically, it's for very risk. specific. Yeah. 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 So, so and then who de- who decides on whether they're low risk or high risk or, you know, exactly. who's who's labeling exactly. them? Exactly. And not. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. So that's that's a whole other the birth, topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And even the women who who are all choosing the birth in those units, I don't think everyone's been offered these special classes. Yeah. So. Uh, basically we're i think northern ireland are are getting there but it's you know we're a long way from Mm -hmm. from even where we were in edinburgh and it made me really appreciate like oh god everyone see in edinburgh the women are so lucky with Mm -hmm. how much choice there is from support antenatally and postnatal your lactation consultants and your postnatal doulas and just oh the support is fantastic and all the classes yeah so yeah Edinburgh well have you, have you choose have you choose access them because actually it's amazing how many women don't know that they can access them so and it's not the fact mm-hmm. that there's, there's anything i think hugely wrong with the antiator classes but i think they're very very limited and they're also very driven by whatever the policies and procedures are of the hospital so for people who want to maybe birth out with those or to be or have the information that they can navigate it in a way that they want to it's not very easy or they don't necessarily feel that they can do that so I think I think it's got its other challenge I think it's got its other challenges in too just just only having NHS provision and I'm surprised how many women just choose just to go to NHS classes that they don't think about going to other things I think they feel that they can get everything that they need from those classes. But yet in those classes, often we don't hear about lighting, environment, the importance of not being interrupted, the importance of making your own choices, you know, how to make choices. You know, they're not always necessarily give, given. So, um, yes. and, and the, even, the, even the postnatal education yeah. is, you know, practical things like, you know, how to change baby nappy and, you know, bath a baby. Whereas what you really, well, in my opinion, need to be told is that war yeah. taking off work. Is your mom going to be taking off work? What about your best friend? Is your freezer full? What, like, healing herbs and remedies have you got ready for you? You know, no visitors for a week, yeah. you know, that yeah. sort of thing. You need to nest in. You know, breastfeeding will be hard, but here are resources and signposts and p- to people who can help you if you are going to face these hurdles. Just really yeah, totally. great, like practical, emotional, supportive advice. Like you, you know how to do babies that yeah. way, you know. Yeah, I know. But that's the thing is, you can learn how to change an nappy very, very quickly. You know, you change two nappies and that's it. You're yeah. done. You, you can learn it. But you don't know things like about like how babies like they don't sleep, <laughs> like how often they feed, like how much they feed. You don't really ever learn about what's normal feeding behaviour or normal sleeping behaviour. Um, you, you know, there's a lot of things I think are really, really missing from so much anti anti education, really. And also, but how to look after your relationship, like how to work as a team. I think that's really, really missing um, in anti education. You know, how to look after yourself look after your relationships and not just relationships with your partner but all your relationships it's really hard to carry that mm. forward so um yeah i think what was missing Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on tonight I, I think there might have been like a couple of little connection issues but hopefully on the replay it'll hopefully come out completely fine i haven't seen there's any comments coming through i'm not sure why not so if there have any comments i will go back through and try and answer them but certainly, if anybody does want to leave a comment, Lindsay and I will certainly co- comment back and, and we will be um, happy to carry on with the dialogue and the conversation. So um, so just thank you very much, Lindsay, for joining me. No, and, um, my pleasure. I can't wait. 
I can't wait to hear um, what happens. I won't ask you when your due date is, but I'm aware that I think it's, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> it's coming up soon, so um, so you can. Well, um, the midwives go to... on call. Yeah, the midwives go on call for me on uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, all right. I knew, I knew it was soon. I, I didn't know the actual date, but I knew it was like coming up really, really, really soon. So, um, I'm so, super. And I'm like, following your journey as well, because your journey yeah. is much different than mine, but it's very exciting. Yeah. No, I think it will be completely different because um, it'll be completely different because uh, of all the um. Yeah, no, it will be quite quite different. Yeah. I'm not this class has been low risk, so um, so <laughs> it, it, it's really 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 interesting um, being on the other side of it and actually really seeing what women face. Actually, it's been really interesting. So, and I feel really privileged because I can take or leave the bits that I want want to, and I know how to work within the system. Yeah. And I've also got a massive army of people around me that I can. Um, speak speak to and chat to and get help and support from so um so it's quite different so um so I feel yeah I feel really 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 blessed um, but it's so different so anyway I I feel like we've been chatting for ages we can chat all night <laughs> so, I know. So, okay. I know. so anyway thank you very much and um and yeah and certainly if anybody's watching this and they've got any questions to ask them I'm sure we're happy to answer them anyway take care bye Bye. Bye, Bye honey. Bye.